was smiling in the mirror. Mono Iwa is one of the classic designs by John Alden. More about him on this website. He was known worldwide part due to his success with the offshore racing scene in Malabar. John Alden is best known for his fast and seaworthy offshore boats, most of which are considered true classics, including the Countess 44 Mono Iwa. The John Alden collection of designs is part of MIT's Heart Nautical Collection. Mono Iwa was built in 1965 by Grumman Aircraft Company when they first started piercing yachts. Chris Christofferson recorded Stranger in the early 1970s. Mono Iwa was originally named Stranger, but her name was changed around the, the mid-1970s when she was birthed in Papiette, French Polynesia. Her name was changed to Mono Iwa, which is Polynesian for seabird. When sailing across the ocean, to me, she actually looks like a graceful seabird resting on the ocean on a long journey to a place unknown to passing ships. I hauled her at Port Townsend, Washington, kept the hull, cabin, and spars, and rebuilt her between 1990 and 1993. I removed the Lehman diesel and installed a brand new Isuzu QD100 marinized package that included a new Borg Warner drive. Along with the installation, we installed a new monel drive shaft, dripless shaft seal, and a three-bladed prop. With the engine installation, we also installed two Baldwin fuel pre-filters. They can be run individually. In the event that one should plug, it can be cleaned with the yacht underway. This is a very important safety improvement. The two diesel tanks are port and starboard and hold a combined 130 gallons of diesel fuel. This is a freshwater circulation pump. The freshwater tanks on Mana Iwa hold approximately 185 gallons. When she was rebuilt, I had a marine electrician rewire the entire catch with all new electrical panels for AC, DC, and grounding. There's a large comfortable V-berth in the forward compartment which has lockers on both port and starboard as you enter and storage above the berth on both sides. The anchor locker is toward the bow forward of the cabin with lots of room for stowage of gear and lines. The galley stove is brand, brand new. It is stainless, four burner, and gimbal to the very highest quality. Also installed is an auto shutoff panel to turn off the propane tank that is placed up outside the cabin on the foredeck. The tank and valves are all new and totally up to Coast Guard regulations. On the port side of the galley is placed a dinette table and sitting area. The cushions are covered with a Tahitian floral fabric and also the bottom cushion with a cream-colored vinyl on one side in the event you are wet. Under the cushions are lots of large stowage compartments. The head is a Wilcox Crinton Dam with a manual crank handle. There's a holding tank and a macerator that pumps out the sewage. This is a view from the galley into the main cabin. One thing I really love about Mono Iwa is on those cloudy days in western Washington, her interior is bright and lively, as you can see from this photo that I took yesterday on a rainy day. A beautiful sitting area. The draperies are white and let the sunlight filter through. Mono Iwa's cabin is a great deal more pleasant than sitting down deep inside a hole where it's dark and you cannot see anything outside especially if you decide to live aboard or anchor out in a lovey harbor such as the San Juan Islands or perhaps La Paz, Mexico. The Navigation Center. I have a couple of wicker chairs that I place there with red floral cushions. The Halon Fire Suppression Tank that will save your boat in the event of, heaven forbid, an engine, fire, engine room fire at sea. The new water heater that I photographed upside down, back in the compartment under the cockpit. This is the new propane tank and regulator that is placed up on the foredeck, outside the cabin, in its own compartment. Raytheon radar. It's a 40X. That bulb above the radar dome is so that those other guys can also see us. Stow navigation instruments facing out to the cockpit with the interface inside down below. Here is that beautiful ventilation dorade above the sleeping cabin. There are three such dorades. And a photo of the large front deck that is great for moving around and lounging in the sun. You can see the spinnaker pole mounted on the main mast. 
Here is a deck opening for the Whale Gusher Manual Bilge Pump, which is our largest capacity pump. Of course, there is another automatic 12 volt one down in the bilge. Overhead photo of Albina Anchor Windlass and CQ Anchor. The electric motor on the windlass has been used twice since it was installed. I laid out the newly galvanized anchor chain for this photo to show you. It's 200 feet long and to this date has never been in the water. Plus there is attached another 150 feet of line that was spliced onto the chain by Fishery Supply in Seattle last year. How do you like that for great lounging and enjoying the water and or reading a book at the dock? And it's only two steps down to the main cabin and a cool drink. The steering gear is Edson. One day I decided to take the Traveler into Fisheries Supply in Seattle and let them re-rig it with some good looking red line to match Mono Iwa's hull. And here she is at the dock in Gig Harbor, Washington. Whoever purchases Mono Iwa can also rent our dock at Murphy's Landing, Gig Harbor, Washington. This is a condominium marina where we have owned our slip since 1989. I probably will not be finishing restoring Pequod, our other catch, for another two years to put her in the water. Pequod is a 42-foot gaff-rigged wood classic catch that was built years ago in Shanghai. If you would like to read about John Alden, the designer, and the yachts he has also designed, plus more information about Mono Iwa and detailed specifications, go to the More Information link on the website, sailboatforsalewashington.com. That, again, is sailboatforsalewashington.com. Thank you so much for visiting with us in Mono Iwa.